Hey there guys, Tim here from T-Pass Aquatics. So today what I wanted to share with you guys is a couple tips that I came up with for fry proofing some of your filters. If you guys have live bears and you know I'm someone that I'm breeding guppies and endlers right now, keeping those fry out of the filter is definitely a big concern. Uh, people come up with all different you know ways to do that and using pantyhose and things like that. Uh, what I came up with is kind of using some filter media and then using some sponges to kind of cover up filter intake. So I'm gonna show you for a few different types and styles of filters today, exactly how I did it in my tanks. Uh, I haven't had any issues whatsoever with fry getting sucked up in any of these tanks. So I think they're all good options. You know, some of them are pretty simple and other ones uh, kind of MacGyver it a little bit and use some hot glue and some filter media. So I'm gonna show you exactly how I did that. All right guys, so on my 10 gallon that I got here behind me, on a couple of my other five gallon tanks. Initially on my 29 gallon where I had an aqua clear uh, 70 on that initially, what I did was with the filter intake, I just found a sponge that fit on that and just you know covered right up over the uh, filter intake. So it was just a cylindrical sponge. The ones that I had all had a cutout already. Um, there's various sizes if you look on Amazon. You may have to experiment around a little bit. You know, with mine, I had success with a couple different sizes. Uh, some of the sizes fit on, you know, certain filters and other ones it was a little loose. If you get a sponge and it is a little bit loose, you know, if you don't care too much about aesthetics, you can honestly just use like a rubber band or something like that to, uh, you know, get the top of it so that it stays on there well. But that is one option and that is one of the easiest options I'd say because you can just go on there, you can basically buy, some of them have like a smaller, large and things like that. Um, other options you can use like a piece of sponge or get a circular sponge like that and then you can basically always make a little bit of a bigger cut in it. So if you cut the bottom and you almost do like a little bit of an X across the circular part, then that will allow it to expand even a little bit, you know, wider and accommodate some of uh, maybe if you had a tighter squeeze, it'll kind of give you a little bit more play. So the other hack that I have, and this one did take a little more work, but it's actually pretty easy to do is a lot of the time on those internal filters I found, you know, that's where you kind of just have like slits in there. And uh, there's typically a little spot where kind of uptakes the water. So all you need to do then is basically cover that, you know, intake part and make sure that fry aren't gonna get sucked up through there. So whether you've got, um, I've seen some like, you know, five gallons and stuff like that that have a built-in filter, um, this would work for something like that. Otherwise, I have like on a couple of my five gallons, the filters that seem to come with some of the kits are these like whisper ones that are an internal filter. So what I did on those actually is I just use a, a little bit of uh, filter media that I got on Amazon and I'll put a link for that down there below. That'll be an affiliate link. So it does help me out, but it's really cheap. And uh, if you guys haven't figured out yet, you know, buying the typical filter refills and stuff from the store is not the most economical way to go. And a lot of the time, it's honestly not the best for your biological media as well. You can buy this filter media like I'm gonna show you here, and it's very easy then to cut that to fit, you know, multiple different filters. It lasts a long time. I've got seven tanks right now, and I was able to use you know, plenty of that from that roll that I got online and it's still going. So even in a few months, if I want to replace some of that with some fresh stuff or, you know, seed for another tank and put it in with, you know, one of my current filters, I've got plenty of spare material to do that with. But what I did was I cut up this material and I basically just, you know, lined it up against the actual intake part. So say your intake is, you know, like two or three inches long on say like this whisper internal filter. All I did then was kind of cut out the piece where I made sure it was going to overlap that intake a little bit. It still allows water to flow through it. You know, it's not too occlusive. You still get a filter flow going through. But in a fry tank, you know, especially in a tank like that, like a five gallon, which would be perfect for fry, then it's going to do the job of keeping them out of there. So all I did was I used a hot glue gun and I put a little bit of hot glue basically around the perimeter of kind of the intake there. And then I stuck that filter foam stuff on there and it just dried and worked perfect. And the best part is like once that dries like that, uh, it's not gonna you know leach anything into your water. It's gonna be perfectly fine. It's not gonna negatively affect your fish in any way. And uh, I've had no issues using that in there with my fish.
So I think that's one of the coolest methods because if you have a filter like this, you don't need to go ahead and you know buy a whole new filter, or come up with some other way. Uh, if you're losing, you know, guppy fry, endler fry, any other type of live bears in any of your filters, these are easy ways to cover that up, and you know that way you can kind of have peace of mind with your fry and not having to lose them that way. Especially in my tanks, my endlers and guppies tend not to eat the fry. So if anything, that would kind of be the biggest risk I run is having them get sucked up into the filter. And guys, it's honestly not very permanent too. So if you want to rip that off, you know, you could always take a razor blade to the glue if you had any problems getting that off. But it's hot glue, so it should come off pretty easily as well if you ever want to take that off. Let me know what you think down there below if you found this video helpful. You know, please give me a like there. Subscribe if you like videos like this. I'm going to be covering a lot of guppy and endler content. I'm going to show you a few breeding projects I have and some other cool tips and tricks like this. So I'd love for you to subscribe if you found this helpful and if you like fish content like this. But thank you guys for watching with me here today. Stay tuned and I'll see you on the next one.